All right, everyone. Taylor Gish, strength and conditioning coach at Northwestern. I'm sitting here with uh, Coach Dumonceau. Uh, Alicia Dumonceau is the head softball coach at Northwestern for the last decade. Uh, this would have been your 12th season, right, Coach? Yep. And uh, and as uh, as the head softball coach, oh man, what a resume! 200 plus wins, two back to back NCAA berths in the last two years. Um, but beyond the coaching resume, one thing I look up to Coach Dumonceau on is her ability to bring together her rosters, rosters, mind you, that change um, year to year with incoming students and graduating students and build kind of a cohesive team relationship that is really evident anytime I interact with or interact with her squad is that relational piece. And we know with the current climate right now that relationships are hard to foster. And, and so what I wanted to get Coach Dumonceau on here to speak into was, um, you know, the importance of relationships and, and how to foster them. So um, was that a good intro, Coach? Anything you'd like to add there about you personally? No, you knocked it out of the park. Thanks, Gish. Oh, with the, with the softball puns already. I yeah. love it. So um, so much of the sporting experience uh, is relational, um, especially with the team sports. Uh, how in this current uh, situation right now, the pandemic, are you, Coach, connecting with the softball squad? Sure, so we have Zoom meetings uh, once a week as a whole team, uh, which has been really fun to see everybody's faces, get everybody together. And then um, throughout the week, the girls, you know, I'm, I'm trusting and hoping that they're connecting with one another and encouraging each other throughout the week. Um, I send, you know, accountability groups for um, a devotion for our team to go through so that they can connect on a deeper level throughout the week. and. Um, we just, you know, we're trying, they did a fun video together. So oh, cool. anything that we can do to be creative, to stay together is kind of our key. I think that's, that's awesome to hear. And I mean, if there's out of that, um, you know, any benefit, it's, it's first and foremost, the relationships that come, but then this cool second part is, you know, then you get to talk about your sport with people who you play your sport with and do life with them. That's so cool to hear. Um, for teams to succeed, communication is huge. Um, if you guys were currently in normal rhythm, not this current pandemic, but we were playing our 2020, 2021 season right now, um, what are some ways kind of in a typical season that you guys be, are intentional about relationships? Is it, you know, taking separate time or is it kind of through the practice? Um, what are some ways that you guys are intentional with that in the normal season? We, uh, we love doing service projects as a team. That's oh, something nice. that's pretty unique to us. Um, we try to do once a month. We actually had something set up for March and we got back in a nursing home, which um, obviously we weren't able yeah. to do. But uh, we, we do do some different service projects um, throughout the year, which is really great. Just that off-field connection, I think, is so important to build those relationships apart from kind of our skill set because – uh, we don't want them to find their value and worth um, as a member of our team in just what they can do for us on the field. So oh, that's great. Um, so we do different things. You know, any holiday is a great excuse to get together and have a team gathering. Um, we actually on Monday, um, this is a little insight into our team, but uh, the last practice of regular season on a Monday, we have a day called Mustache Monday at practice. <laughs> and so that would be this coming Monday. So we're actually oh, going to do shoot. our Zoom meeting with that. So stay oh, tuned cool. for some pictures of that. It's just so fun. We try not to take ourselves too seriously. We have a lot of fun and it just allows us to have that really fun relationship building off the field. Not uh, having worked with uh, many softball athletes prior to my time at Northwestern. That is, correct me if I'm wrong, that's also kind of a fun part of about just like softball culture at the collegiate level too. And, and you guys put that Northwestern spin on it. That's so cool. Um, when you look to communicating um, to the squad about, um, you know, principles of healthy relationships or ways to kind of establish relationships and connections, what are some of those like key behaviors or key traits um, or things that you associate with a positive or with a healthy relationship? Um, a lot of things. I would say, you know, I have... It's, um, it's a big question. <laughs> yeah, Philippians um, 2, 1 through 4 is a passage that we've talked about over the years. Some teams have adapted it as a team verse, but um, I'll just read it to you and then add something else. It says, so if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy, by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, 
but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And that is um, something that's just a good framework. Um, and then along with that, also, um, I think authenticity is key. Mm. And then trust. I think trust happens over time. It's built over time. Right. But um, I do think when, when you provide opportunities for authenticity and for people to be truly themselves, then um, it helps build that trust and to, to affirm that and say, hey, we want all of you, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, mm. but we want, we want all of you so we can affirm that and encourage you in that. That's so great. And I, I had a follow-up question about, you know, common mistakes people make, but it almost sounds like maybe the pressing into the authenticity is something that, you know, if you're sitting, um, we'll use another sports analogy. If you're sitting on the bench and you want to get into the game relationally, um, would you say that, you know, kind of just pressing into that authenticity and trusting peace are, are, are two key behaviors to building a successful relationship? Yeah, a hundred percent. I would say, you know, trust isn't built unless you, you give of yourself too. So you can't sure. just expect somebody to trust you if you don't give anything of yourself <laughs> yeah. either. So it is a two way street for sure. And that's always, I mean, that's always a fun dynamic to get to see where, you know, you, you have those, uh, you know, I'm an incoming student. I may be a first year student on campus and I, I, I need to be where there's so much temptation to maybe put up a facade, but then at the same time too, as a returner, it's like, well, we have this established thing and, we need to, you know, you got to get outside yourself in order to meet other people where they're at, um, put some skin in the game. And oh, that's such a good word from you, coach. As we wrap up here, I just have one final question. Um, who is your best friend or best friends and what actions or life experiences have led to there being that kind of glue that holds that friendship together? Yeah, I think um, a great example is one of my friends that I made in softball while playing at Northwestern. I think we, um, we obviously had the the like-mindedness of loving softball and sports and that competitiveness but over the years it's been some you know somebody who i can call at any time of the day um being intentional with you know understanding that friendships change you know with um distance maybe or mm -hmm. um, different seasons of life but um that intentionality is key and so um i think there there's a, a real adjustment that does take place over that longevity of a friendship. But um, if you're willing to, like you said before, like put skin in the game and, and to, to work at it and to, to be all of you and show all of yourself to, to somebody else, it, it can be really rewarding. That's awesome. Coach, thanks so much for sharing today. I appreciate it. Like I said, I, I look up to how you foster relationships on your team. Um, as someone who doesn't have a team, I just get a benefit from the byproduct of teams that have awesome relationships. And uh, we're filming these videos as a benefit to all Eagle athletes. So um, hopefully you guys were inspired today. Um, you know, if you're softball players, uh, you're hearing a lot of things you've probably heard before. But if you're not on Coach Dumonceau's rosters or um, hopefully an inspiring and encouraging word today about building some relationships always, but especially in this time when we're not uh, rubbing shoulders together around campus. So thanks for your time today, Coach Dumonceau. Um, and uh, anything else you want to say to the student athletes um, kind of in this present time? Uh, no, I think just, thanks for having me. I think the biggest thing is just to continue to, you know, put your nose to the grind, but don't forget to have fun. I think that's really important. Sure. If we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong. That's a big thing <laughs> with softball, but also in, in our house here, I have three boys and um, I think it's important to, you know, not take it too seriously and understand that it's going to be maybe a hard day, a great day, but just to take each day at a time and to, to continue to do your best. Love it. Stay on it one day at a time. Have some fun. Mm -hmm. Coach Dumont, so wise words. Thank you so much for your time today, Alicia. Thanks, Gish.